be repairing espresso machine. Uh, this happened to be the Long Key Magnifica ESAM 3300. And we're just going to need these tools and the replacement parts. In this case, we're going to replace the water pump. And um, the next video will replace the motherboard, the control board for the entire unit. So let's start with the water pump. First step is simply disassembly the unit. We'll remove the six screws from the back. After the screws are removed, simply slide the side forwards towards the back and they flip out like this. And the backboard flips out and it un unhooks from the top. Today we'll be focusing on the water pump that seems to be defective in this unit. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that the pipe that comes from the water container is not clogged in any way. We have checked already um, the bath between the water pump goes through here, along the side here, and up to the pump. There's no, there are no obstructions here. So we know that our water pump is defective. And also we check these um, additional lines, make sure there's no obstructions here as well. To remove the water pump, we simply slide. Um, there's a lot of uh, rubber pieces here to absorb all the vibrations of the pump. We'll slide this big uh, rubber piece out here and uh, there are a couple of uh, metal the connectors here. Um, what I like to do is mark one of them with a marker, so that way I know which one to connect the back to. So I'm gonna pause here and mark them for us. We are back, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark one of them with this permanent marker, hopefully it will stay, uh, so that way we know which side is which, where the connectors go to, we will make a bigger mess later on. Okay, now it's marked, we'll use our pliers to remove those connectors. Connector one, connector two, okay. And for our water uh, connectors here, it's very difficult to see through the video, but there is a slight, um, I don't know what to call it. It's a, a ring sort of things. You pull it out. I don't know if you can see it. You pull that out and the, the top pipe comes off. We'll Pull that through the rubber absorber. And for the second bottom piece, there is a hook right here. We'll lower that down with your, your pliers and pull that down so that we can remove that rubber absorber. Um, now we have this piece here. After checking my pump, I know that the pump that I purchased only comes with the actual pump itself, not with this, this additional piece up top. It looks like a little splitter. So we'll remove that by twisting, slowly twisting that off. Keep that to the side, remove the rubber absorber. And now the last portion of it is just pull out the rubber 
holes from the bottom. Now we've got our pump out. So now we'll place the new pump in and uh, do the reverse connections. And we're back with the new pump. The first thing I like to do is put a date that these things get replaced uh, for future reference. So that way we know um, something comes up. We know when they were last replaced, we can uh, go by whether it's warranty or um, just keep track of what's getting uh, damaged. And now uh, we'll start by inserting the bumper absorber onto the pump this way. Oh, not this way, this way. Getting confused. That way. So now we're here. We'll screw the other piece up top. Slowly but make sure that goes in the right way. All the way through. And these two pipes go through the rubber piece. Um, we'll make sure that gets inserted right, like so. First, we'll insert the top piece, which is probably the hardest one to get into. We have to insert fully on the top and replace that metal uh, bracket holder slash clip on top looks good here and there you go the second piece is over here it's a rubber hose and make sure we put these clip on so nothing pops off just like so um, and third is we'll insert our connectors I drew this on the spare on new pump um, based off of the old pump so that's how I know this side goes here and that side goes here and we'll hide. This is a thermal uh, breaker. In case the pump gets too hot, this trips, stopping the pump from functioning and burning itself out. It gets hidden inside of this little pocket on the side. Now that we're all plugged in, we'll reinsert the bumper, rubber bumper, back into the machine, like so. And uh, we should be good to go. Show you that in a the new pump we inserted here, or even the old pump that you may have had, there's no water going through the pump and the pump is dry. This is also a uh, very bad thing. So what we wanna do is uh, insert some water into the pump so that way it doesn't run dry. Uh, running dry could burn your pump up. Um, so what we do is we'll get a, a, a small syringe, probably from a kid's uh, medication or any kind of syringe that you may come across and now we'll insert some water into the pump so that way it's not running dry. And this is how we are going to inject water into the pump uh, to make sure the pump is lubricated enough to keep on going. Now you see a little bit of water dripping down here. Um, if you have a towel, you can, you can put the towel down here just to absorb that little bit of water that is pumping out. You take your in this case, you happen to see it's a CVS syringe, uh, kids medications. Um, you put it into the end of the pump and you inject that water through. Um, in my case here, um, I just noticed that the pump is actually off, which is a great thing. I didn't see that before. What we want to do is insert that rubber um, absorber back in and put your pump back into place. Yeah, make sure that's uh, inserted properly here. All right, so after you made sure that the rubber absorber is inserted here, 
uh, with the bottom supported. Make sure your piping gets into your pump and uh, insert some of that water. As you can see, I'm inserting here. Make sure the pump is primed. Um, now I'll take the uh, pliers. I'll squeeze this pipe here. Make sure the water doesn't um, squirt out. And then I'll inject some more water into it. Uh, one hand is very difficult, but I'll get it. More water into the syringe, into here, and squirt it in there just to prime that pump. Make sure it doesn't squirt out like that. Prime that pump a little bit more. Hold that pipe, that rubber hose. Try to insert it into your, uh, where it came from without squirting too much water. There we go. Now with a uh, paper towel or towel, dry up that water puddle that you created on the bottom. Okay, now we're ready to try again. We we'll turn it off and turn it back on. And now you see the water just pumping through the pump, which is great. At this time, we're actually turning the machine off. It goes through its cycle of uh, cleaning whatever is in there. Um, as you can see, the pipes are pretty dry up here. Uh, this machine was off for a while, so it may take a couple of um, on and off cycles to pump all that water through these pipes um, to get that machine going again. So we'll turn it back on again. And now we'll put the sides back in, the back piece on, and uh, you're ready to go. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.